guys are traveling through Texas. Um, introduce yourselves and, and a character you're playing. You know, I'm Wallace. You all know me. I'm uh, working on becoming a Texas, well, not Texas Ranger. <laughs> this is Nat <laughs> Show. <laughs> just joined the force, uh, the police academy. Just got out. I'm going to be starting my job soon, but we decided to take a little trip. Just uh, all us friends, me and my best gal and her brother for some reason. <laughs> and Timmy. Can't forget Timmy. We're all just good friends. But yeah, you know, long tradition of uh, people in my family being officers. And uh, now it's my turn. I'm going to be uh, a law enforcement officer starting next month. I still, I still got some time. Chuck, who are you playing? I'm playing Jack. I'm just chilling, man. I like my musics. I like my drugs. Yeah. Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm friends with the cops. That means I can't go to prison. Things are pretty cool. <laughs> you know, I can't just leave my brother at home because it'd be this but worse. Look, Janice, I know he's your brother. But come on. <laughs> At that, Justin, you're playing Janice, right? Yes, I'm playing Janice Barrow. I am Jack's sister. Wallace is a caretaker. Pain in the ass, but somebody's got to do it. Met Wallace working at the Austin Police Department. He'd come in, check up on his dad before retirement. That's how we met. Typical love story. I'm essentially Jack's uh, caretaker because he's a lousy. <laughs> <laughs> love you, Jack. <laughs> and Josh, playing Timmy, right? I'm Tim Miller. I'm a male nurse. That's not weird. <laughs> you know, the fact that he keeps saying it's not weird every time he mentions it <laughs> makes it a little weird. I will become a doctor eventually, but in the meantime, I'm a nurse. I'm just along for the ride. I'm childhood friends with these guys here, so we'll, we'll see what happens. I just imagine Tim like, now I'm going to give you mouth to mouth. Don't make it gay. <laughs> <laughs> not weird. <laughs> not weird. <laughs> Men can be nurses too. Like, but I, I don't need resuscitation. Stop resisting. <laughs> Yeah, we just got to finish up with a camping trip. Wallace just finished the academy, and he's going to start his new job in law enforcement in about a month. And you guys are taking a little summer vacation trip across Texas, doing some sightseeing. And yeah, it is extremely hot. This is the hottest heat wave that anyone in Texas can remember. We need to establish whose vehicle it is, who's driving, and what kind of vehicle it is. It's Jack's beat the shit Winnebago. <laughs> Which I offered to drive, but... uh. Janice said that was the only way that Jack was going to feel like he was actually contributing to the trip. Okay. <laughs> and he's if you need it and validate. He'd be more needed and validate if it wasn't so fucking high all the time. <laughs> I'm sorry. that I shouldn't be using that kind of language in front of a lady. Apologies. Apology accepted. <laughs> so we begin our story, West Texas, July of 1975. You guys are on the road. The endless ribbon of asphalt stretches to its vanishing point at the low hills on the horizon. So the heat haze makes the distance nearly impossible to guess. The car has become an oven as the temperature tops 100 degrees, and it's not even 11 in the morning yet. You strip down to the bare minimum clothes required to preserve your modesty. I am still in like a full suit. <laughs> the only way I'm modest. I need my tidy whities and no one can say anything at <laughs> But you still look like you just climbed out of a swimming pool. Having the windows down does little to help as the hot wind feels more like an industrial hair dryer than anything. You have enough water to keep you hydrated, but it's so warm that it's like drinking weak tea. You're told that the next town wasn't that far up the highway, but you haven't seen so much as a speed limit sign for the last 20 miles. The gas gauge has just dipped below half a tank, and while no one has said anything, you are all starting to get a little nervous. You're not even sure that turning back would make much of a difference at this point. Then you see it. The sun reflects off a faded metal sign depicting a way too happy gas station attendant in a cheesy cowboy hat that looks like it dates back to the 1950s. A cartoon word bubble over his head says, you're almost there, partner. Beneath him, a weathered SO logo. Almost as an afterthought, there's a small sign tacked on the pole beneath the sign that says five miles and turn right. As promised, five miles later, you see an unpaved but well-defined road turning off to the right. Two signs are mounted on a slightly tilted wooden post. The top one reads, Abattoir, three miles. The lower sign simply says, Gas and food. So while you're driving and you're coming up on this- Oh, so not in my car, but I still have to drive. No, that, that makes sense. I assumed you were driving. <laughs> no, 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 Jack is far too impaired. <laughs> Does Jack actually have any drugs on him? I have loads of drugs on me right now. Does anyone want to bump? <laughs> Janice, I swear I patted him down. It still keeps finding him. I have drugs everywhere. Well, you know, when you get at something, would you like some green, friend? Put that away. <laughs> I'm assuming you guys are going to pull off to get some gas and uh, rest it. Have we come to the gas station? Or are we still like driving. You're currently driving and you know that there's an off turn on the highway to the right that is supposed to take you to the gas station. All right, gas station that way, or we could completely derail everything and just keep driving. <laughs> we go right into the desert. <laughs> and as you turn right, <laughs> uh, you hear on the radio the following. 
I didn't realize I had the radio on. It's always on. <laughs> was bloody rain. Uh, like some audio bow in your ears here on. I uh, bang on the radio to try and get it to come in clearer. <laughs> Damn it, Jack, out of everything to barely work on this, man, this is the worst. Welcome to another day in the seventh circle of hell. You're listening to 93.7, The Arrow. The mercury is expected to top 110 degrees here on the Devil's Backbone, and tomorrow ain't looking any prettier. As Captain Jack's old grandpappy used to say, you can't change the direction of the wind, but you can always adjust your sails to reach your destination. I don't know where you're headed, my friends, but here's a little something to keep you rolling down that highway. So yeah, you pull off the highway there. You hear Coyote Mike on the radio. The mercury is expected to top 110 degrees here in the Devil's Backbone. You know, considering what I've been hearing in the news lately, that global cooling couldn't come any sooner. <laughs> uh, you know, that's a bunch of hogwash. That's just a hoax. And where's that gentle breeze? <laughs> Pull up to this gas station. The big sign says SO. Just SO? E S S O. SO gas station. Oh. Get out of luck? What? The sign over the station is old and faded, but the name is still legible. A cardboard open sign is propped in the filthy window. The two gas pumps are rather archaic in design, but seem functional. Single garage bay door is open, and a 74 Chevy Nova is up on the lift. Though no one seems to be working on it at the moment. A row of oil cans sit against the front wall of the structure, though the dark stains in the dirt imply that one or more of them have leaked out. I'm gonna go put two dollars into the tank. That should fill us up. <laughs> what color is that Chevy Nova? So it's black. Yeah, this is probably looking somewhere to cool off. Sitting in front of the gas station in the shade of a low corrugated metal overhang are three men. And they seem to be staying in the shade from the sun underneath this overhang. And there's also a rusty Coca-Cola machine making a high-pitched wine and a cigarette machine as well. Well, I'm going to go get me some pop. Do you want anything? Uh, no, I'm all set. Uh, I'm going to go pay for gas. Jack, you stay in the van. Don't touch anything. Oh. Tim, if you wouldn't mind, just uh, pump the gas once that's been paid. And I'm going to walk up to the gas station as I pass those three guys. Take a cowboy hat out of somewhere, just put on my head, just to take it off to like tip towards them. And then I put it back in the abyss. <laughs> the of holding. I'm from Texas, so you know, you got to be able to just pull out a hat like that. That's true. And yelling at. She'll definitely go up, get herself a soda, probably politely nod, say a polite hello to the gentleman. You go up to the soda machine and you put the money in, press the button, and you're getting your sodas. If you say hi, one of them kind of spitting into a, a tune. <laughs> And he nods at you. As Janice is walking away, I want to be like, hey, Jam. And I throw like two quarters and say, give me a pack of smoke, would you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want menthol, not menthol? What do you smoke? Who in the hell smokes menthol? <laughs> give me marble reds. <laughs> all right, all right. No need to get touchy about it. Hey, he's up on him. He's a male nurse. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. It's still weird. <laughs> it's not. It's not weird. <laughs> so you get your sodas and you walk over to the cigarette dispenser and you see a large handwritten sign that says out of order. I look around to see if Wallace is within hearing distance. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Language. <laughs> Sorry, uh, gentlemen. Uh, excuse me. Uh, howdy. Is there um, any way we can get a cool drink, some pop, some ice, maybe? He says, our ice machine's broken, too. Most things are pretty broken these days. You know what I mean? Well, give it about five decades. <laughs> now, come on, I'll go fill her up for you. And he starts walking over to the car. He's going to pump your gas for you. That, is that a no, gentlemen? No, we don't have any eyes. Well, I guess I'll go and see if the cigarette machine has any of them Marlboros. So the cigarette machine is the one that says out of order. Oh. The Coke machine works. You're able to get two Coke. Oh, oh thank God. <laughs> I'll grab the sodas and head back. The gentleman's going to walk back with you. His age is difficult to gauge because he's so worn. But he might be in his mid-40s. He's a tall, lanky man dressed in a white button-down shirt with surprisingly clean overalls. He's got an oily rag dangling from his back pocket, and he does indeed have a pack of cigarettes rolled up in his sleeve. He's a little on the slow side. Not much of a talker. Hey, dude. What's the uh, lowdown? Not, not much around in this gas station? He looks around and says, Well, there's a bar down the street. You can get some food. And there's this here gas station. Abattoir is a little old town. Not much happening. There's a convenience store. There's the barber. He's down the road there. But, uh, yeah, that's about it, son. Appreciate you talking with me. He nods. He'll go over and pop open your gas cap, and he'll start filling you up. He looks down. He says, oh, boy, son. You know you done got a flat tire. 
this tire back here is flat. Damn it, Jack. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> Told you not to touch nothing. You didn't touch anything. <laughs> now, boys. No, Janice. Damn it, I'm tired of this. <laughs> hey, hey, good vibes. Uh, yeah, you damn flower child. <laughs> and yeah, the gas station attendant, he's just like, boy, that's just unlucky. Can I roll a luck to see if it reinflates? <laughs> uh, no. How far did you say that bar was down the street? It's not that far. It's about a quarter mile, half mile right down the road. You can see it right there down the road on the left-hand side. Give me a couple hours. I can get this fixed up. Go get yourself a bite to eat or what have you, and I'll get you fixed up. I'm feeling generous today. They're going to do that for free, huh? No, you're going to have to pay me, of course. I'm in money. That's not being generous. That's just doing your job. <laughs> That's just doing business. Y'all don't look like you're in the business of pushing your asses home. It's a wee bit hot out. <laughs> if I was, business would be good. <laughs> I go over to where Jack is. I said, Jack, man, these dudes are bugging out. Shit, don't you got no spare tire? We just change it ourselves. Uh, I kind of lost one of my spare tires. Jack, what do you mean you lost your spare tire? <laughs> it rolled away. <laughs> That's a likely story. You probably sold it for drugs. I, I would have traded for it, but nah. It just rolled away. It fell off the hinge thing, and they go, whoop, 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 and then it's gone. I saw it going down the highway. <laughs> I wish I had traded it for drugs. Then I'd have more drugs. <laughs> <laughs> this is a complete net loss for me, man. No drugs, no tire. It's a bad time to be Jack. Damn. <laughs> What's your name, sir? Named Russell Williams. You call me Russo. Okay, I'm not going to do that, Russell. Tell you what, if you get it fixed, I'll pay you for the time and the effort. You look like a law-abiding stand-up guy. What was your name? Name's Wallace. Wallace Comley. All right, Fred. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fix your tie for you. Go and have yourself a bite to eat or whatever you're going to do. And you can sit here in the mud. I don't care. I'll, and give me a couple hours. You can pay me when you come and pick it up. And that's how reasonable. All right, come on. Let's get over there before we die of heat stroke. John, before I'm handing out some Coca Cola's to anyone who wanted. Ruffleck sends his hand to you, Wallace. It's very dirty. So his overalls are extremely clean, but his hand is very dirty. Yes. I hesitate for a second. I'm a man, so I'm going to shake his hand. And he gives you a nice firm grip. I say, now, young blood, let me ask you a quick question. How much is this going to run us? He says, well, I happen to have several of this specific tire, so I can cut you a deal on it. Half price as usual, and we'll settle up on it once y'all get back. A couple bucks to get you a nice new tire on there. How about we pay the usual price and you throw an extra tire in there so that someone will have a spare? I could probably do that. And I'm just going to give Jack, like, the dirty eye. The dirty eye. <laughs> Jack's completely spaced out right now. He's just staring at the sky. <laughs> you know, Janice, it'd be a lot easier to just gowl at him if he actually paid any attention. <laughs> yeah, no, he's usually pretty gone most days. I'm surprised he remembered what happened to the tire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, he gave me quite a bit of detail. Rusto, what'd you say your name was? Yeah, Russo. Russo, Russo. Russo? Ah, right, man. Listen, we're going to blow this taco stand. We're going to go up the street here. You said there's a... Um... The bar's right there on the corner called The Last Stop, but I wouldn't go venturing too far, too deep, you know what I mean? I think I'll catch your drift. Shit, let's go, fellas. Russell started walking back over to the other two folks, and he's going to point at one of them, wave his hand like, come on. One of the gentlemen of the two remaining uh, very begrudgingly stand up and start heading over, and they're going to walk over to the garage area. Okay, I'm going to move you guys to the smaller map. This is the area that you guys are in. This is not all of Abattoir, but this is the center of town where you guys kind of are. There is the last stop, Bar and Bed, and that's going to be down the road on your right. So we're going to be passing these buildings here as we go. What do we see coming across these buildings? Yellow. <laughs> I always knew they were yellow. <laughs> Them cowardly buildings. They're just old abandoned buildings. Okay. That's where the vampire is going to be. No, nah, that's where Rusto and his fucking goons next to him take travelers. As we pass these other buildings, do we get a glimpse of what they are before we get into the, like, the bar? You'll pass by these yellow buildings that are just abandoned, clearly no one living in there. Big trailer park area on your left if you're walking into town. You see a big sign right at the entrance there announcing Wayland Estate. A big kind of cartoony sign from the 1950s depicts a man in a blue business suit flanked by his doting aproned wife and adorable children clinging to his legs. This improbable family gazes in manic joy at an idealized representation of the estate's mobile home. In a fit of creative license, the artist has the sun setting behind the mobile homes in the north, while the letters spelling out Wayland Estates were 
were once painted a metallic gold, most of it had flaked off, revealing the bleached wood beneath. Sun and vandals have taken their toll on the sign. The once vibrant colors have faded, and multiple bullet holes mar the surface, leaving each family member with a rather impressive grouping of shots about their heads and chest. That's Texas, you're gonna find bullet holes. Nothing abnormal here. So as we get into town section, are those anything in particular? While it's considered the town center, this is due primarily to the greater concentration of larger structures that include a general store, town hall slash post office, and a seedy bar named the Last Stop Bar and Bend. You see a few locals sitting on the porch of the motel next to the bar. There are currently no cars in the parking lot. Other businesses down the road would include a barber shop, laundromat, grocery, slash liquor store, drugstore, bank, electronic repair shop, shoe shop, and a tourist trap called Thunderbird Gifts. Oh, I know where we're going after the bar. <laughs> it's hard to tell the difference between places that are open, closed, or out of business. To the north, you can see a large water tower and a cemetery situated atop a low hill. In the distance, you see a large industrial looking building, and to the south, a classic church steeple can be seen over the stop roofs. Mather's General Store, Tom barber shop the post office the last stop is bar and bed those are in your immediate area but i think we want to probably get in maybe grab something to eat i'm famished i look over at jack jack you'll be on your best behavior it was a soda machine that was out of business but i did get smokes correct no the cigarette machine was real i do think i want to hit the store for that i know they're bad but shit, they just look so dang cool we can all stop by the general store real quick. Rule number one of traveling, uh, you don't split the party. <laughs> so you guys are all going to roll up to Mather's general store? Yeah. Yeah, Tim needs his smokes. As you approach the building, its wood-fronted structure has a roofed port that runs the full length of the building. A sign above the entrance declares this as Mather's general store. A few old barrels with various farming implements sticking out of them flank the main double doors, which are wide open. A balding man wearing denim overalls sits on a sofa at the far end of the porch. A pile of crushed beer cans are piled on the cushion next to him. He stares unabashedly as the characters get closer, a smoldering cigarette between his fingers. Now, Janice is going to hold on tight and close to Wallace. I say, what it is, good buddy. Listen, I'm trying to get one of those things right there. Down at the gas station, that was all out. Hoping I could nag a pack of red. He's watching you guys as you approach the building. He's not trying to hide that. He's pretty much glaring at you guys. As you ask him that, Jimmy, he slams down the last of a beer he had in his hand, crushes it, and chucks it on the ground. So you go inside. I'll, I'll get to it. Thank you. Appreciate you. He's doing, doing tobacco. So he's chewing tobacco and smoking. Yes. Man, that's double dip. <laughs> that is dedication. He, he puts down his cigarette and picks up his cigar. <laughs> he spits out his uh, chewing tobacco. Puts on like a nicotine patch. <laughs> I turn to Jack, I say, this dude bugged out. Can you believe that? He double dipping like that. That's crazy. I never even thought to do no crazy shit like that. The doors are wide open, so you guys can walk right in. Yeah. The interior smells of dust, kerosene, and cigarette smoke. It doesn't look like it's been restocked in a number of years, judging by the heavy layer of dust covering everything. The only place that's conspicuously free of dust is a path leading from the front door to behind the counter and the counter itself. Um, can I do some perusing and see if I find anything of interest? Yeah, give me a spot hidden roll. Can Janice help him out in any way? She's like up close to him. Yeah, you can give me a spot hidden roll and you can give me a bonus die if Janice is helping you. I rolled a 20, which is enough, I think. That's pretty darn good. My spot hidden, I get under 50. That's a hard success, then. Yes. Holy shit, they got ranch Doritos. These haven't even been invented yet. <laughs> See, as you're roaming the store, you sell mostly simple clothing, canned goods, dry goods, paper goods. There is a large commercial refrigerator and freezer on the back wall containing a few basics, like eggs, milk, and cheese. There's a couple TV dinners, but you do spot behind the counter a large bottle of hard liquor and a single pack of cigarettes. If you don't mind me asking, what brand are them cigarettes? It's the only brand, son. Marble Reds. Man, that's what I'm talking about. But see, I knew you was good folk. I got friends back home. They swear by camel, but let me tell you, ain't nothing better than the red. There's also a, a pile of, like, matchbooks as well. I think I'll take 20 of them. We'll take a matchbook 20. <laughs> <laughs> There's some guy playing a guitar in the corner. He's like, that's a great band name. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the smokes and two boxes of matches. He'll ring you up. When you hand him the money, he's scratching his chin a little and looking at the money. Seems like he's having a tough time, like, counting it out. But he gets there. It seems he gets frustrated and kind of throws it in the cash register. Uh, you owe him some change. No, man, it's all right. Give me a luck roll, Timmy. She is 52. That, that's a success. 
you actually didn't give him enough money, but he hasn't realized. He just picked what you gave him and throws it in the register. He looks at you like transactions over. Like, what are you still doing here? So how's your day going? He looks at you. He, he gives you the hairy eyeball. <laughs> he spits into another platoon that's below the counter. So you're a regular around here? <laughs> Wallace, with that hard bot hidden roll, during this conversation, you see a newspaper clipping, the missing person sign. There's a woman, a wife, and two kids in it. So a woman, a wife, and two kids? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a man, a wife, and two kids. Well, clearly that was just a woman, but that was a wife. <laughs> That's an interesting missing person being four people. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, they do missing families down here. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, you save a lot of space on the missing post. <laughs> I'd say. Who might those folks be? Obviously, that's a woman, <laughs> her wife, <laughs> and their children. He turns around and looks at the poster long and hard, looks back at you. He says, no clue. No clue. Well, hanging up in your establishment, no idea? Nope. Not a not a very, very large town. Surely, surely you, you know these folks if they're missing from around the area. Never saw them. Do you know who put up the poster? Y'all done in here. Now I have more questions. <laughs> I ain't got the answers. Are there any names on the poster that I can read? The family is the Millers, and it gives their names Tom, Lacey. Two kids are Jamie and Stacy. It's the Miller family. You could tell that that sign is like very old and worn. It's been plastered up in the window there for a long time. That was probably put up in 59. We can get out of here. I don't think I were welcomed here for some reason. Better off at the bar. What happened to Southern Hospitality? I mean, it's not really the South here. It's more like the Midwest. Yeah, like South would be Georgia and stuff. This is like the Midwest, yeah. Anyway, good looking, brother. Appreciate you. Thanks for the smokes. We gonna get out of your hair. It'd be funny if it was bald. <laughs> yeah, we gonna get to step. Let's go, fellas. Catch you later. On the flip side. He doesn't give you any departing words. He just watches you leave, glaring. That was a uh, freaky deaky. I can't believe that. He just walked back over to his soap on the porch and you hear as he cracks another beer. I'll say that's what, what's going to happen to your brother. Oh, on an establishment? <laughs> <laughs> I'm moving up in the world, guys. A terrible establishment. <laughs> A terrible customer service. You're ruining my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I imagine there's nothing going on in the street. It's pretty empty. There's no activity happening. You don't see any vehicles, really. Any vehicle you find is broken down and not drivable. But you can give me a spot hidden check if you'd like. I rolled a six. <laughs> nice. Two. Oh, you rolled two. Damn. Wow. <laughs> As you're walking around town, you know, in some of the windows of the other establishments, you see a couple more of these missing person signs, and it seems to be of the same family. Jack, you notice as you're looking around, not only is there very few people, but you haven't seen a single child. There's no children in this town, it seems. So you guys are going to go to the last stop barn bed? Yeah. Right. You approach the last stop barn bed. Uh, has the look of an old western saloon, complete with a wooden false front, a wide board flanking the dusty street, a couple of hitching posts, and a water trough. A cigar holding wooden Indians stands next to a pair of narrow double doors in the center of the front wall. I'm going to just say to Jazz and point to the Indian, like, enjoy that while you can. Pretty soon those won't be allowed. <laughs> Several <laughs> large windows are covered with signs and notices many of which look like they date back decades. The doors are open. Walking in? Yeah, walking right in. As we walk by, I kind of nudge Jack. I say, man, you got to be respectful to the Indians, man. And I say, uh, how? <laughs> I got a little bit of a peace pipe right here, man. <laughs> <laughs> the Indian is just a statue, so it pays no mind to your joke. It's not offended at all? Is not offended, no. Not even like a little bit? No. It looks pretty content, actually. It looks happier than any of the actual people you've met here. As we go in, do I see like, a jukebox or anything? Give me a spot hidden. That's the first thing you're going to look for when you walk into this place? Is a jukebox. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Perfect. Nope. Oh. Uh, Janice would also like to look for a jukebox. <laughs> yeah, give me the roll, Janice. We can't all miss the jukebox. All right, roll it. I can't see shit. I'm stoned. Yeah, that's 30, <laughs> so that's a new. You can spend luck. <laughs> no, 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 I'm invested in the jukebox. You guys walk into this building. Immediately, your eyes are fixing for a jukebox. <laughs> All of you guys walk in, and everyone's eyes scan the room for a jukebox. This is a terrible establishment. No jukebox. 
you guys are all disappointed. And then Timmy walks right past you guys all the way to the other end of the room. There is a jukebox. I say, oh my God, Phil, are you looking in the wrong area? It's obviously in that back corner. There's a long bar that runs along the left wall with a dozen or so stools. Tables and chairs seem to be haphazardly positioned about the room with the occasional support post breaking up the space. On the far wall is a jukebox. Timmy notices the jukebox, walks across the room, and begins to finagle with the jukebox. Timmy, you found the jukebox. This is why you're our favorite male nurse friend. It's not just because you're our only male nurse friend. <laughs> How many male nurses do you know? <laughs> Man, I don't know why you gotta keep bringing that up. I told you, that shit ain't weird. It's not cool that you keep bringing that up. <laughs> I do not appreciate it. I do not like the jokes. But what I do like is this here Steely Dan. <laughs> I make that selection. I noticed that this jukebox happens to have Ricky Don't Lose That Number, <laughs> which is a great little ditty. I put that shit on. I'm going to put like a few quarters on the jukebox as like, uh, I got the next song. Is there anyone else in the bar looking at us strangely? <laughs> the wall around is covered with all manner of antique farm equipment that looks like it might date back to the early 1800s. Scattered amongst them are the occasional black and white photograph from days gone by. On the wall behind the bar is the classic mirror that rugs the full length with bottles of liquor lined in front. There's a wall above the mirror that's covered with license plates going all the way back to 1908 up to the present. Some are rusted and bent while others might have been pressed yesterday. There's a couple people on this, clearly a cook in the back. There's the bartender. There's a couple other folks eating. Give me a spot hidden roll, those of you that are looking around as well. Damn, Timmy's got the eye of eagle. That's what it takes to be a medical professional. <laughs> you think doctor's got eyes like that? I'm good too. <laughs> Jack, you notice the demeanor of both the cook and the barkeep. The cook is kind of beeping and bopping back there, cooking some food and doing his thing. Seems pretty relaxed. The barkeep is a little more uptight. He's kind of glaring at you guys from behind the bar. Not as much as the general store owner. A little more subtly, but he's definitely like eyeing you guys. And then Timmy, you notice a guy at the bar. He stands out a lot. He's very tall, completely bald. He's got a big scar going down his eye. He has what looks like a straight up screw screwed into his head and like sticking out of his skull, like some sort of back backwards medical procedure. Very gruff and you can hear him talking to the bartender softly and you can hear he's got a very gruff, grumbly kind of voice. You don't know what they're saying, but I kind of notice this guy over there is kind of standing out to you. Hmm. Boss, would you be a deer and give me a drink, please? Are you guys going to sit at the bar or are you going to find a table? I'll find a table. You go get us drinks. All right. Uh, water's for everybody, please. <laughs> Boss, no. <laughs> Janice, you know how I feel about drugs and alcohol. Are you sure drinking water from here is a good idea? <laughs> no, no, you're right. We, we've had a rough day. We deserve a little something else. I'll get the hard seltzer. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's hard lemonade. No, no, no. Not that kind of hard. Just some bubbly seltzer. So you guys have a seat and Wallace will go up to the bartender can order your drinks. Yeah, fine, it's carbonated water. <laughs> it says we only got the tap water. Do, do you have any soda? Yeah, we got pop. You know what, I guess I'll take a round of pops. Then. I'll be right on it. He starts been grabbing some sodas out of the ice box and stuff. He says, we all from anyway. Texas. Well, look at that. Me too. Practically brothers. We're so much in common. This guy is <laughs> a tall, lean man in his late 40s with dark eyes, stringy black hair, and a pencil mustache. You uh, been in Abadar a while? I uh, sure have. I own this here establishment, and uh, you know, we like hospitality. So maybe you'll stay around a while. Well, I'll be honest, we're hoping to just get our car fixed and be on our way. Maybe play a few songs in the jukebox. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all having car troubles, huh? That's something you see a lot of around here? He uh, looks up at all the license plates above the bar and says, well, it happens time and time again. Hmm, again, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so he's gonna hand you your pop. I'll send Carlos over to come take your order. Carlos, the guy in the back? He looks behind him. Yeah, that's Carlos. I'm gonna say hello in Spanish. Do you speak Spanish? I do. How well? Uh, I have a 30 in it. Roll me a language Spanish roll to see if you can <laughs> say hola. <laughs> say hola. <laughs> this end, yeah. No habla espanol. <laughs> Hi, Carlos. <laughs> and your roll? 79. <laughs> Uh, you tried to say hola, uh, and instead you said bonjour. As I go back to the table before he comes to take the order, I go to the jukebox to see if they have a song in Spanish. But the only thing I can find is Feliz Navidad. Oh, 
I was like, oh, that that's Spanish. You'll like that. Feliz <laughs> Navidad. <laughs> oh, appreciate it. And I just like look at him behind and he's like, I put my thumbs up. <laughs> he's looking at you so confused. You know what's funny is Feliz Navidad was released in 1970, which means that it might be on this jukebox as a new song. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. All right, guys, come by with the Cokes. So the sodas, are they in like bottles? Yeah, they're in bottles. All right, so I saw him like open them up. Yep. Okay, I feel better about that. I know it's a bit extravagant and there's caffeine involved, but this was kind of the only thing drinkable they had. Thank you, such a peach. And uh, I'm pretty sure the bartender's not too happy with me, but I think I hit it off really well with the cook. <laughs> I'm glad you're making friends. Yep, I played this song for him. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> you go back to the table, you're talking to your friends. Police Navidad is playing in the background. <laughs> the dude with the scar seems to be perturbed by this. He looks back at you at the jukebox, Wallace. Kind of like lets out like a gruff snarl, like bah, goes back to like sipping his beer. And as you're back at the table, uh, Carlos will come over. He's a short, stout man, clearly of Mexican heritage. So he has long black hair tied up in a neat ponytail. He has a thick mustache that's neatly trimmed. He wears a blue work shirt, jeans, and a white industrial cooking apron that is reasonably clean. He's the short order cook at the last stop, and he seems to be doing quite good at his job. Yeah, as he comes by, I say, Feliz Navidad, which is apparently the only Spanish I know. What month is it? Uh, July. It's the end of July. <laughs> Perfect, man. We got Christmas in July. <laughs> he says, my family is, is Mexican, but I was born in Texas. I'm sorry. Your accent is just so heavy. Anyway, it's a um, pleasure to meet you. But what do you want to eat? He's going to hand you a menu. I'm handing you two things. That's the outside of the menu. And this is the inside of the menu. Oh, the out of tab. Hmm. Oh, man, a dollar twenty for barbecue ribs and cornbread. <laughs> he leans down. He says, do you need a minute? Well, let's see here. I'll take a hot shower, please. <laughs> <laughs> do you do that yourself or? <laughs> well, don't we have a registered nurse on hand? Don't they be bad? <laughs> oh, shit. He says, you are quite funny, sir. <laughs> I enjoy this. <laughs> you understand me, Carlos. He looks at you for a minute. The joke is over. You've stopped laughing. And now it's just this awkward moment where he's just like looking in your eyes. Burgers and fries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. What time of day is it? Late afternoon, I say. I just want to know which menu I was ordering off of. I think I'm going to get one of them BLT. Nice. And I'll be like, uh, the later will have a salad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. Well, while it's not quite the 50s, I'll go for the uh, barbecued ribs and cornbread. Darling, oh, it's 100 degrees outside. <laughs> You're really going to make this man go out there and barbecue some ribs? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's not very copacetic. You know, she'll take the cheese and let a sandwich. Yeah. All right, I've got a, a BLT with chips, a burger and fries, and a cheese and lettuce sandwich for the lady. Can I at least get ham with that? I got liverwurst. She'll take the liverwurst. I'll go for a special. And one last stop special. Y'all make this here? The chips? Yeah. Or is this Uts or some shit? He's like, nah, we, we get them in from out of town. All right. I'll still go with the BLT. Carlos will pen everything down, and he says, I shall return shortly with your food. All right, who's got the next song on the jukebox? I'll go over there, see what they got. And I'm like, man, these fucking people are not going to like this selection, but I just love the sound. The 1970s soft rock. Let's kick it with some America, Mr. Golden Hair. That's a great song. This is a great song. I knew there was a reason why I wanted Tim on this trip. <laughs> you put that on on the jukebox. I will start singing along to it, like probably louder than I should. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. We're here for this here trip. It's all good vibes, you know? It's all good vibes. Carlos comes back shortly with your food. The dude at the bar is getting increasingly more aggravated at the presence of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> he just don't like good music. It's plain to see. Carlos, what's your second favorite song on the jukebox? Since I'm pretty sure I played your favorite. What is my favorite song on the jukebox? Is that what is the question you're asking me? Well, second favorite. I already played your favorite. What was that? The Spanish-speaking one. I already forgot the name. Joy to the World by Three Dog Night. Oh, uh, Carlos, you gotta hang out with us. <laughs> that is a great pick. Yeah, we're definitely playing that. 
I'll be honest with you, that caught me on guard. I he was gonna say, Oye Como Va by Santana. <laughs> was, was that out? <laughs> yeah, 1970. It's been out for a bit. Oh, well, that's next. While he's bringing our food, I'm gonna play Joy of the World and ask Janice for a dance. Oh, oh my God. God. You put on that song. This is before or after you eat? Probably playing just as he's bringing out the food, so just before we eat. He's bringing your food. You put the song on. You're about to ask Janice, and he says, maybe best for you to finish and go check your car, maybe. He looks around and then looks back at you guys. How in the hell did, does he know our car's fucked up? I may have said something to the barkeep. It's a little creepy. <laughs> yeah, this town kind of freaks me out a bit. I'll be honest with you. Carlos, we're going to play the song that you requested. We'll get our groove on real quick. Eat, and then we'll be out of your air. I'm, I'm sorry if we're bothering you. It is not so much me that, that you might be bothering. Oh, well, then we're fine then. <laughs> Look, Carlos, we're going to play that song that you requested. Uh, maybe one more song as we eat, and then uh, we'll probably be on our way. Holy shit. You know what I was just thinking? We'll be here playing Santana, and what is this dude's first name? Oh, you know, he's right, Carlos. Why did I not make that connection to me? And you guys are all eating? Yeah, we'll probably be eating at this point. Uh, how, how is my burger? Give me a constitution roll. Jack, Oh. what did you get to eat? I got the special. Yep, so give me a constitution roll, Jack. Shit, I got bacon. I'm gonna need to make constitution too. No, you're good. Yeah? I made it, my cot is 35, I rolled a 34. <laughs> and Dennis got the cheese and lettuce sandwich and he put the liverwurst on the side because he was a little confused at exactly what you wanted. So the BLT was good though, I'm fine with that. Yeah, the BLT was okay. I got a 35. That is a success, my con 65. It tastes pretty good. A nice cold pop and a nice meal is exactly what you needed. Getting out of the heat a little bit, you needed this. It's not the best meal you've had, but- It's not the worst thing I've had. <laughs> it certainly hits the spot in the moment you're in, for sure. Janice, are you eating the liverwurst or are you just eating the cheese and lettuce sandwich? Yeah, I'm picking up the liverwurst and just the cheese and potato chips. Yeah, no, you're good. Uh, I am going to ask Carlos. This is a pretty good burger. You guys get the meat locally? We get a lot of our meats purchased from uh, Mathers General Store across the street. Do I recall seeing meat in the general store? No. <laughs> huh. I guess they must keep that in the back. The meat is all the children. <laughs> I'm assuming this is all beef. He says, it's all burger. Mm, that's not what I said. <laughs> it's all ground burger. It's all carne? I think the only beef that you get with that is you're going to be fucked up. <laughs> Carlos looks at you, Wallace. He says, this guy is funny. I like this guy. <laughs> Carlos, you have been the shining moment of this trip so far. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully you don't stand too long. If I may, that uh, gent in the corner, what's his deal? That is Seth. He lives in abattoir. A bit of a ruffian. I don't really know his deal. I try to stay on his good side. And uh, Carlos, have you been in the town your whole life? My family moved into Abattoir from the far edges of town, bordering the neighboring town. A number of years back, there's an old uranium mine that opened up and drew a lot of people in Abattoir for work. An old uranium mine? That sounds <laughs> lovely. That must have been such a great opportunity for the people here. Not what I was expecting, to be honest with you. <laughs> he said, yeah, that was about 10, 15 years ago. And, but after 10, 15 years, people died of radiation poisoning, and now we're here. <laughs> a lot of businesses have shut down, you know, over time, and Abattoir kind of got run down. Now it's kind of a ghost town here. You know, there was a big slaughterhouse, the junkyard, a lot of businesses, but uh, a lot is closed up. Yeah, that checks out. Did the mine just uh, dry up or? I don't really know the deal, uh, but give me a, um, I don't know, not a persuasion check you're rolling. What other check could you get, do that's a, like a language conversation check? I could try Spanish again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we could do fighting. I could talk with my fists. Uh, there's fast talk. Psychology, maybe? There's charm. Yeah. Give me a charm roll to see if you're able to charm Carlos. Mine's a 15, so nope. I'm going to continue to try to speak poor Spanish to him. I'm just like trying to throw words like in every now and then. <laughs> you know, Carlos, it's been a great time here. Very polo locos. Yeah. <laughs> Push <your> polo. polo. <laughs> Grande huevos. He just says, I'm not really sure what the deal is with the mine. I've kind of, kind of lost its marbles over the past few years. Don't really have anywhere to go. So I work here. I cook. I listen to music. You got a car, Carlos? I don't. I, I live down the road. I actually live in the estate. Oh, yeah, no, we passed. It's, it seems lovely. It's okay. <laughs> I live down the road. 
Well, uh, Carlos, you ever, you ever find yourself in Austin, you'll have to look us up. We'll go to different bars and play these songs on the jukebox. <laughs> it says that would be love. And he'll begin to take your place and stuff. I leave him like a massive tip. Okay. So as we're walking away, I say, uh, oh, we're, we're leaving, right? I would think so. It's up to you guys, yeah. We're walking away, kind of duck my head down a little bit, and I say, uh, lo siento para mis compadres. Did you have a 30 in Spanish? I do. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And he just says, no hablo espanol. <laughs> he responds, the appropriate response in Spanish. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Uh, appropriate response in Spanish. <laughs> I will say as we leave, as they say in Mexico, appropriate response in Spanish. <laughs> the guy who's sitting at the bar has also gotten up to leave, and he pushes past you guys in the doorway. So he literally pushes you guys as he walks by. Excuse me? Oh, hey, friend. He looks back and he spits on the ground. He opens the car door. The passenger seat, somebody's waiting outside for him. Oh, guys, you know, we should be a little nicer. He seems to have a screw loose. <laughs> Is it loose or stuck in? <laughs> yeah, you don't really know. Can I make out what the license plate is? Give me a spot hidden roll as you're checking out the vehicle. Dude, I am fucking crushing it today. Yeah. Is 21 a success or a hard success? Yeah, it's a hard success. So you do catch the license plate. The license plate just says Seth 4. That's E T H 4. You also see, as he gets in the vehicle and they're about to drive off, in the back seat, a couple of guns, shotguns, what looks like a mace, some primitive, like, flail-looking object. They drive off, picking a bunch of dry dust up into the air where you guys are standing. What was the license plate? You said death or Seth? Actually, no, um, it's be eating you. Be eating you? <laughs> yeah, or beating you. Have you ever seen Jeepers Creepers? Yeah, it's beating you. <laughs> Got it. I mean, at this point, it's been a couple hours between walking down here, the grocery store, sitting down eating, the jukebox, and all that. So uh, you would think that your car is done by now if you if you wanted to go back. Yeah, we could do that. You guys head back to the gas station. You see your car waiting for you. It's parked right outside the garage bay door. Got a nice new tire on it. As you guys are walking up, Russo is filling up some gas cans. He gives y'all a nod. Oh, Russo, how did it all come out? He says, well, those tires were a little rusted on there, but uh, we got it fixed up for you. No problem. Yeah, well, someone doesn't take care of their things. It came out this. <laughs> well, uh, that's why we got to take care of each other, right? Oh, so now what do I owe you? Give me five bucks and we'll call it square, huh? Ooh, man, five bucks. Things have been getting expensive, but I'm sure it's worth it. <laughs> That's a rip off, man. You got two tires, son. Nope, there's fan. I'll give him six dollars. He counts it out, but very slowly. One, two, yeah, two, one. yeah. I like to think he just counts to one, two, because I gave him a five and a one. It's like, wait a second. <laughs> this is only two. <laughs> he probably licks his fingers in between each one, too. Yeah, he goes one, five. Yeah, yeah, we're good, son. <laughs> <laughs> Um, can I uh, just kind of like inspect the vehicle very quickly? Yeah, sure. I don't know if you want to do spot hidden or you can give me some sort of mechanical roll. Uh, my spot hidden is better than mechanic. Yeah, go ahead. Ooh, you know what? I'm going to spend six luck. Okay. I make that a success. You now have six less luck, but you succeeded. Yay. Everything looks good. You get up underneath the car and you're looking and everything seems to be in order. Exactly how you left it. But it's got a brand new tire on it. There's a brand new tire in the back. Looks pretty good. Well done, Russell. I'm, I'm impressed. You were inspecting it, Josh? Ah, uh, yes. Make sure everything was, was copacetic. Yeah, probably should have done it with the beef, but you know, live and learn. Yeah. That Russo says, that was a pleasure doing business with you. We all heading anyway. We don't get too many visitors around here. Uh, we were just coming back from vacation. We we're going to be heading back to Austin. We're just passing through. Well, if you're trying to get to passing through, <laughs> You're gonna want to go up that road there. Any points? Bear left, take a right. That there's Red Road. So you're gonna want to follow Red Road right through the valley there. That'll take you right over to Passing Through. All right. I'm um, assuming we all get in the van. You guys can depart Abattoir and begin your journey to the rest of your vacation. Yay! We survived. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> that wasn't so bad. Yeah. <laughs> Getting your decent, decent food, you know, listening to the jukebox. It was great. Good time. Made a friend in Carlos. <laughs> ah, I like Carlos. Yeah. So the next time we play, some real fun begins.
<laughs> I don't know. I had a pretty good time that time. <laughs> Hey everyone, this is Josh from 5D RPG. Just asking that if you like what you heard on this session, give us a like and subscribe for more tabletop role-playing goodness. Let us know in the comments what we should be playing next, whether it's a D&D module, one-page RPG, or something completely different.